Voice of Laurie here to teach you how to use Adobe Premiere Pro. First up, importing footage. With an empty media bin in the bottom left, double click or right click and go to import and find where the footage is located. You can use Ctrl A to select all the footage and then select OK. If you want to import more footage, right clicking here or double clicking won't work. You'll get a menu with all these other options where import won't be one of them. In order to import more footage, right click in this particular area and then you can find the drop down menu with import and find more footage or media. Here I'm importing music and sound effects. Now we'll go to arrange some footage and use in to out. Simply click, hold and drag whatever you'd like to move onto your timeline. Once you move your first piece of media, you'll see the timeline suddenly appear. There's V123 and A1234. These are your visual and audio timelines. Here I've put in my music track and now I'm gonna cut a piece of footage and put that over top. With this entry clip of me walking in the door, I don't want the preamble of me coming around the corner. I want to cut it specifically for an in and out point. To do this, I can move this blue bar and find the exact point that I want. By pressing I on the keyboard, I can set the in point and you can see that a gray bar has appeared. This will be the particular part of the footage that will be imported when I drag it onto my timeline. But we're not done yet, I want an out point as well. And now I've pressed O and you can see that the grey point has shrunk. Now when I drag this onto my timeline, you can see that it's only the specific in and out points that play. Now I'm going to cut to another clip, but I also want there to be continuity. So as I come in through the door, I want to cut to a shot in front of me looking up of where I've just come in through the door. So I'm doing the same thing here, I'm doing in to out, I'm making sure that the footage lines up with what we see on the right. And now it's there on the timeline. But you can see there's a mistake, it doesn't match up with the source footage. For some reason it is zoomed in on my footage. The reason why this has happened is because the settings of this particular clip might not match up with the other one that is in the timeline. Or the project settings weren't made universal for the entire project. This window might have come up at some point, and the student or you might have selected no. You don't want to match the settings. To fix this, we can simply right click on the clip and select scale to frame size. If students are making film trailers, fading to black is a common convention. So what we're going to do now is add a dissolve. Dissolves are an Adobe Premiere, essentially a fade to black but we should call them dissolve so students learn early on that this is what a fade to black is. To add an effect, just go to the effects tab at the top of the screen, and on the right we're going to go to video transitions, dissolve, and then cross dissolve. And we can drag this onto the clip that we'd like, and now we've put it in place. You can see where the fade begins and where it ends at the end of the clip. We can also drag this out if we want the fades to be slower on the footage. Another common convention of film trailers is showing the film's title. So what we're going to do now is add a title card. In this particular scenario, I've added a jump scare at the end of the trailer, and then I want to immediately cut to the title of this film. To do this, we can go to the top left of the screen and go to File, New, and then Legacy Title. In this scenario, this is going to be the only title of its type, so I don't care about giving it a name or anything to identify it. And now I'm in the title settings window. Now I'm choosing where I want the text to appear. I'm setting it so it's well within the boundaries of the screen. And I can also change the font type. I think the one that I already have fits the theme quite well, actually. And now I can change my mouse type in the top left. You can see there's all these other tools here, but I'm just going to select the mouse tool. So then I can click and drag on the text and change its position on the screen. When I'm done, I can cancel out of this and you can see that it's now a new piece of media in my media bin in the bottom left. This is a masterclass warning students are allowed to leave at this point. Now what I've decided to do is I actually want the title to be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to add a zoom that times perfectly with the music. So there's the jump scare from the visual and then the zoom in of the text. I'm going to go to the effect controls of this particular clip. You can see there's a mini timeline of where the effect has happened. Now positioned at the beginning of the timeline of this particular clip, I'm going to select add keyframe and you can see here that a keyframe has appeared on the timeline of this particular clip. Here I'm finding where on this particular timeline I want the zoom to occur. 
and I'm actually only going to adjust scale, not position. Scale is going to be the size of the text, position would be where it's located on the screen. As soon as I change the size, you can see a new keyframe has been created and the change has been made. And here I am showing you that I can change the scale, but if I also changed where it was position-wise, that keyframe would be changed as well. I'll very quickly go over some additional features that students may want to know. You can unlink the original audio by right-clicking the audio and selecting Unlink. This separates the visual from the audio, and then you can delete the audio, but the visuals stay there. This is good if the original footage has birds chirping in the background, other students talking, and you just want the raw footage to make it more scary, especially for a horror trailer. Another thing students may want to do to make their footage look more scary is have a play around with some other effects. In the Effects tab and under Video Effects, students should play around with a few of the things in here. Tint is a good one to make the footage either fully desaturated in black and white, or slightly so, so there's a bit of colour. Here I've dragged the tint onto one of my clips, and now I can just right click and copy and paste the exact same effect onto another clip. By selecting Paste Attributes, a window will pop up and ask the specific effects that I want to copy. Tint is the only one, and so I'll select OK. I can shift and click all of my other video clips and do the exact same thing to do this en masse. I don't have to go through every individual clip doing this, I can just select everything and then paste the same attribute. If students are having laggy playback when watching through their film trailers so far, they can go to the top left and go to Sequence, Render In to Out, and this will preemptively render all of the footage you have so far, and so it will be clear and viewable when you watch through your playback. The very last thing to do once we're all finished is to export the footage, and we can do this by going to File, Export, and Media. Once we're in here, it looks quite complicated, but what we want the settings to be is H.264. We've got to change the output name. And then we can hit export immediately with current settings. Now, utilizing everything I've taught over the course of this workshop, I will show you the finished trailer that I made and that I hope you'll be able to replicate with your own footage. Thanks for watching, and I hope this basic workshop helped you learn some skills of Adobe Premiere Pro. You take care out there, happy editing.